So, last we let off, people. Y'all went to the Wizards of Wine. You had fun with a whole bunch of twig blights and vine blights and some, um, some druids. They had a druid problem. You took care of the problem for the Martikoffs. Gave the winery back to them. And then you delivered a batch of wine to the Blue Water Inn where Ulrich and his wife are quite pleased. And due to that, you have free room and board at the inn for however long. Come and go. Do we still have to share them? Y'all are still sharing around. Oh. <laughs> uh, they didn't get more money. They just gave us free room <laughs> All right, so, um, y'all retired to the Blue Water Inn, and before we get started, I need Annette and Thixian to please roll me a constitution roll. Okay. Okay, time for the first roll. Let's roll to the floor. Ten. Fifteen. I don't have one single for that. I have no idea what what I'm supposed to do. That's why I never did. That's why I didn't tell you that. That's why I'm supposed to do that. They were here when I fucking did it. They gave us a book and I was like, Twelve for you and fifteen for you. So, as you are thinking about dinner, your stomach starts to growl. And all you can think about is pie. You do not want the wolf steak or the beet soup or the bread that is offered at the tavern or at the inn. Your mouth is salivating just thinking about the pie. Hey, can I steal one of those pies? I don't have any, so yeah, you can have my pie. Give me my, give me. I get from my pie because I don't need it anymore. So, <laughs> Kodiak gives you his pie and you eat a slice of it. You, Fixian, do not have pie. No, you gave it to her. I thought you gave it to her. Oh, you just gave it. Oh, so you get a slice. So. It's only. It's only. It, it's only good for another day. I have all right, so y'all both had pie? All right, so let me write that down. Actually, Yes, it's a four, four pieces in the pie. They're, they're going to be bad tomorrow. So tomorrow the withdrawal start, or the next day. Um... 
So you eat the pie, you feel very fulfilled. A, th your hunger is satiated. And you are happy again. Yay! Are we going to do a sound with this? Oh, I meant to do sound. You get that. I was looking through. So I kind of feel you guys are pie themed, so I have an idea. Maybe oh, because you're having withdrawals of pie, I can put you to sleep on the day where you only eat your pie, just so you can kind of recover from the effects. I don't know how long that takes. How long can I do that? Yeah. How long can I put you all to sleep? As soon as you wake up in the pie, you can sleep. So. There is hustle. There is a lot of revelry going on downstairs in the tap room of the inn. Um, everybody is quite happy that there is wine again, thanks to the heroes. And so you make your way down to the tap room. Where there, yes, help yourself. It's morning hours, right? It is about afternoonish right now. Day drinking. Except for me, I'm still dying without my so y'all are y'all are it's it's around noon 1 30 at the blue water what are y'all doing they ate some pie <laughs> No, it's free now. You get beet soup and bread to your heart's delight. I mean, my soup and bread might as well eat some soup and bread. Just to make sure I'm well prepared for some bread. Alright, so Danica gives y'all each a piping hot bowl of soup and some bread. And she puts a pitcher of wine in front of you guys and she says, It's on the house. Why can't coffee? Yes, I can get you coffee. So she brings the net some coffee. Here you go, Robert. Here's a, have it too. If the net doesn't have its coffee, everyone's dead. <laughs> I learned this the hard way. If the net does not have its coffee, his aim is so great. I have been shot. <laughs> Over Danica's work in the bar right now. And she she gives you a, a pretty good beaming smile. You see her two sons kind of running around behind her and she says, What can I do for you? Good morning, Anna. How are you today? I am a lot better thanks to you guys. Well, we're all thrilled about to help you guys out in your time of need. Well, we appreciate it. I appreciate the, uh, <laughs> I mean, 
beef soup and bread that you so willingly provided us this morning, along with the, the free wine. A quick question for you. Yes. Is this a pretty good town? Pretty good sized town. Is there a bookstore anywhere near you? Um, there is a bookstore not that far down from the town square. Um, there's actually a few different shops that you'll be able to find. Um, bookshop in particular, there is Yanovich and Sons. They are the ones that do a lot of the printing of the books and the literature and the posters that you'll see throughout town. It's a father and son's run business. If you're looking for books, that'd be the place to look. Spell books? They might have spell books. The, sure. the uh, <laughs> Burgermaster tends to have a lot of those in his library. I he keeps them for himself. Another question. Yes. Um, I do know there is one. I would definitely suggest talking to the two brothers, Zoldar and um, Yevini can point you in the right direction. Um, they go exploring and hunting all the time out there. Well, I appreciate your assistance. Yes, anything you need. All right, so we're going to walk over to the brothers Grimm sitting over there eating their uh, breakfast meal. All right, so you... you yes, I'm going to swipe my, uh, my glass of wine on the table because I haven't drunk any and make my way over to them. All right. So... You walk over and they're sitting there with their big wolf steak and they got a huge knife of a, a sword looking thing that they're just stabbing into and tearing off chunks with the bread. And Zoldar looks at you and he's like, going to look for some bubbers? Bubbers? Ah! Not yet. Okay. So I put my glass of wine on the table and I push it over to him. Oh, now you're speaking my language. What can I do for you? I just have a simple question for you. Yes. Her room is not just tiny camp around this area somewhere. Oh, you want the Vistani for her. I just have a few questions for you. They don't take too kindly to outsiders. Maybe so, but I have a feeling they might be expecting this. Well, if you really want to go to the Mastani, their camp is just a bit southwest from the town. Yes. Um, and so he's he's gonna go. Got something for me to write with. All right, so I pull out my uh, my current journal. All right. And it will give it to me. So you're going to come up here and you're going to turn here and go see a big rock and you're going to see a lake. Don't go in the lake. It's cold. It's. <laughs> huh? It's. You ain't going to find a Mastani camp in the lake. But you can usually find some boats. And there's rowboats. Get a rowboat, cross over the lake, you'll see a trail. Keep following that trail, you'll find the Vistani. Rowboat, lake, gotcha. Just try to smell the smell of wine and trash. You'll find them. My companions are there. 10 miles away. Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about that one. Can you smell the wine again? I appreciate your assistance, gentlemen. When I get back, we'll talk about the wolf. Oh, yeah, let's go take care of some puppers. Let me go ahead and sign up here and have puppers, too. I like. All right, what are the rest of y'all doing? I'm drinking. So, LRS. So. About this time, you start hearing a whole bunch of shouts and hoops and hollers. 
Not hoops, but hoops. <laughs> you see this this guy come walking in. He's a pretty colorful guy. Wears a hat with a big old feather. Real colorful clothing. And he gets up on on the on the bar. And he's like, it is I, Rictavio. Good morning, my fine people. I'm not and and you hear a, a few people. Most most people are think he says I I have a story for you. And I I promise everything I say is true. I have traveled lands beyond Barovia. I have been to coasts and to mountains finding the greatest spectacles to be found. You ever been to Pharaoh? <laughs> been to Neverwinter, does that count? Been there. Boy, I'll be by surprise. That means he can leave. And on, on my travels, I was actually in Faerun, may I tell you, that the story that I'll tell you happened. There was a band of adventurers, much like yourselves, in this band. They didn't all get along. First, there was a human fighter, cocky, confident. He built a war-forged style suit of armor, and he learned to fly. <laughs> then there was the male human monk. He had a god complex, constantly fought with this war-forged thought he was the self-appointed leader of the entire group. They both did. The human barbarian. Strange guy. He raged. And when he raged, he became this green orc thing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there was a human ranger. <laughs> I'm laughing so hard. A human ranger. There was a high elf rogue that most people thought the ranger was in love with the rogue. And she gave her life for him. There was a black furred linen from a royal line from a distant country. Then there was a human monk who really didn't do much of anything, to be honest. I think his name was Nick. <laughs> there was a sorcerer with the reality of Ben reality bending powers. She had this flaming red hair. It was crazy. There was a paladin who carried this huge magic hammer that he claimed only he could lift, but I snuck into the back. I was able to pick it up. <laughs> And they were, there was also this wizard of the highest quality. And he was kind of strange. But, oh well. Then there was this bard. There was a bard in this group. Always have to have a bard. The bard was definitely a ladies' man. Until he got bitten by some spider. And then he was able to, like, shoot string out of his hands. <laughs> But they all went on this adventure. 
They were trying to find this purple ogre guy. In search, they searched the world for these five stones that would complete a golden glove. Wait, was this purple ogre thing Thanos? How did you know? You've met them. You know them, do you not? <laughs> well, do do you know the story? He found the five stones, and he, with a snap of his finger, got rid of half of the world's population. And then our adventurers were able to figure out a way to go back in time and try to get the stones. Oh, did I mention that at some point they killed the big purple ogre guy? That kind of threw a whole bunch of things. <laughs> but in the end, the human fighter, the guy that built the suit, he ended up getting the glove himself and he snapped and Things didn't work the way they were supposed to. That's the end of the story. <laughs> and, and you see everybody kind of take a swig and go, Yay! And Rattavio's like, Thank you, thank you, thank you. I tell you all, it is true, 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 true. I'll tell you more stories later. But I must go, I must go. I have other fans awaiting me. I think I will, I think I will <laughs> and, and you see Rectavio come off, he jumps down off of the bar and he kind of goes into the kitchen and you see him rummage around, he grabs something, he wraps it up into a piece of paper and then he grabs an apple, and you see him start moving towards the door. What y'all think? What y'all think of my story? Pay for that apple. Stop. You didn't get that. Please. You didn't get that. Please. Please. Shit. <laughs> How like Stop. It? You violated the law. Stop. You violated the law. Stop. 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 at you he he looks you up and down and he really looks at you and he's like is there something I can help you with yeah, I just wanted to know where you heard your story I told you I travel worlds worlds throughout Looking for... Who did you hear from? Who did I hear from? I encountered them. You encountered them? Oh, yeah. The traveling part. <laughs> and Pharaoh, you say? Yes. Yes, that sounds right. I'm listening of my superior senses. I can hear his heart speed up in his chest a little bit. I can hear the blood in his veins and pulse. Kind of quickening a little bit. I can see the gleam of the feet of sweat that's rolling down the side of his face. <laughs> and, and 
Valcar's like, why the fuck you lying? <laughs> Sir, I know you're spinning yarns. I know the story you tell. Uh, don't you think you are? Oh no, I'm just, I'm a carnival ringmaster that collects stories and acts and... I can tell you that for sure. But I heard the stories. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. Yes. I heard the same story myself in my travels. Yes? Old. You are not from Barovia. Definitely not from Barovia. I can tell. I so have I. However, I have heard a similar story. Yes. It's exactly the same. Probably. Another strange gentleman. Paul. He's regular man with dark hair. Had a strange helmet on. Had horns on it. I think it says name of Lokai or something like that. <laughs> If I, if I recall right, he was the brother to the paladin. <laughs> Complete asshole, I love him. <laughs> Seems like we, we, we have run similar, similar areas. Well, tell me, uh, the details of what happened. What happened, different, uh, Barovia will definitely wake you up to various planes of existence. So you said you've been to Feyre and Neverwinter. I've been to Feyre and I've been to Neverwinter. I've been many places. And you're obviously here in Barovia, so how are you able to travel back and forth between here and there? That's very hard for me to explain to you. Especially in a very short period of time. And especially with ears all around. Understand yourself. There are many ears in Barovia. And most of them filter to the same person. That? But do, do not speak his name in this town. Yes. Yes. I, I do not know. I, I, I do know that you and your party are not from Barovia. So I will tell you, do not speak that name where others can hear it while you're in Velaki. It is... I'm not speaking that name. <laughs> well, then how do we know what not to say? Batman. I know, I'm trying to get something out of here. Batman. Now, we would like, we can talk later, but I have a very pressing event I need to go take care of. We're going to be wandering the town a little bit, and we're going to head off to a location across the lake. But we'll leave that here. I stay in the room upstairs. I'm sure we'll see each other. And please, don't don't tell my adoring fans about Loki. Your secret. Tells the whole entire squad about Loki. He's Loki. And so you see. Rattavio, he tips his hat, tucks the parcel that he has made under his arm, and he heads out the door. All right, what are y'all doing? I am walking out the door and heading to the bookstore. <laughs> All right, so as y'all are walking through the streets of the town, you see many people hustling. Most of them are heading 
Um, they're, they're holding bundles of sticks and heading towards a rather elegant looking mansion. Elegant compared to all the other homes that are in the area. Irina? I'm assuming that Irina is... Are y'all leaving Irina in the room? We will leave Irina and we will give her all. Let her have a breakfast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the town, you see a lot of people hustling and bustling, um, obviously still getting in preparation for the festival of the blazing sun. You see several roads leading off houses it seems to be houses in this direction um stores um you see a sign that says air sex stockyards you see a sign um that has toys you see a sign that says coffee maker shop you see a sign that says um, that has an arrow, a uh, bow and arrow on it. Fletcher. It doesn't say it. I'm just saying there's a picture. Um, another one that has a pot, uh, a, a cauldron with bubbles coming out of it. <laughs> you see one that reads the beast's rose. You see a general store. You see Thermdale's ornaments, and you see Yanovich and Sons. Give it time. Drop the books. See if I can't find them. Oh, it's. Give it up. I can't read. Oops. You walk into the bookstop and you see an older, older man, quite older man, behind the counter. Um, you see a middle aged man over at a desk writing. You see another young man working a printing press. And you see a third young man who seems to be just organizing things. So as you walk into the door, a little bell jingles above your head. And the older man looks up. He puts his spectacles down on his nose and he says, Good day. What can I do for you? Hello, Mr. Oliver. Oliver. <laughs> No, 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 son. I am Yanovich. Mr. Yanovich. Mr. was my father, but Yanovich is fine. And these are my sons, Yandi, Ivan, and Yenta. That's okay. Just remember Yonvich. That'll work. That's what I call him to. What? I'm looking for a new journal, sir. A nice leather-bound journal, but something that's rugged enough that's going to hold up to traveling and being in the thick of things. I might have something right up your alley. And he pulls out a leather-bound journal that has clasps and a griffin on the front. It's leather. Closes nicely. Has about 200 pages or so of 
um, paper that is not white. It's kind of a creamish brown. And he hands it to you and he says, I don't have a lot, but I did happen to get this some time back, but most people in um, Balaki don't care too much for books and don't write. So maybe this is what you're looking for. I think this will do nicely. I'm not sure you're asking for it. Now, if it doesn't sell in my shop, it's just taking up space. So, two electric. A fair price for fun. Then consider it yours, my son. It's the book. Hello, friends. I would like to purchase your finest spell book. If you have any. Do you have a cookbook? <laughs> any at all, please. Now, son. What? What exactly? You're just wanting a book that you can write your spells into, correct? It does have written. I'm looking for any book that would teach me a new spell. I'm not going to be able to help you there. You, know, you, might you, you might find that type of stuff at the Burgomaster's house. The he tends one. to keep the books that have any value to himself. I have a plethora of parchment. I have calligraphy tools. I have the empty journals. If you needed a spell book to write your spells in, I could help you there. Um, and I can always supply you with flyers for the next festival. <laughs> but actual books, sadly, sad to say. I can't. Oh, you can definitely learn spells from books. I just don't have them. Try to take two. We have a book over here you might be able to read. I believe it says the title is One Fish, Two Fish. He has a map or an atlas of the earth. I don't. Again, Burgomaster. He takes everything. I assume, but I also love you. And honestly, most most people don't travel very much out of Balaki. What would the Burgomaster want to change for these spells? You would have to take that up with him. I'm just a shopkeeper. All right, so are y'all still in the bookstore? waiting for the whole thriller. Yeah. <laughs> I actually learned how to reanimate first. Reanimate and then of course I can use the I have to use Halo's uh, ghost ghosty ability. Ghosty ghosty. So y'all exit the bookstore. <laughs> yes. Y'all exit the bookstore? I go to the entire planet and explore the book. In the entire book? Game over with the cross <laughs> Okay, so you go to the Boyer. Um, the the door on uh, the name on the door says 
Selgar's hovel. It looks more, it's not really a shop, it's more like someone's house that they're running a shop in. Okay. Um, and, and you see a guy, you assume his, this is Selgar. He's walking around and he sees you and he says, good day, sir. I said good day. How are you? What can I do for you? Hello there, farmer. I'm just in mean, your store just driving a little around to see what you got, farmer. You know what I And he just kind of looks at you and he says, Can you speak English, please? Oh, yes, sir. I'm so He went from Texas to Canadian. I have arrows, I have bows, I have crossbows. Um suggested it is still going to come back and bite you in the ass. I I of course can't just give you my stop for free. I've got to live. But I am very generous with my prices. You said you want a quiver of arrows. I have a quiver of arrows for 25 copper pieces. Uh-oh. You go to the tavern, right? You tell me you know me. I'll give you a bottle of wine. I'm gonna call it a day. Doesn't quite work that way, and I don't drink wine. Yes. You do? Good try. Good try. Right. Does anyone have copper? You you've got gold. I don't have anything. According to my stat, I have nothing. I'm also being used for everything. Well, I should have, yeah. So, how, how, I don't remember how many. Oh, yeah, because we had. Oh, yeah, because it's like. Yeah. Ten, it was like 10, ten gold. Ten gold. Something copper. Like five copper or something. You what? You need a copper, right? Yeah. How many coppers? 25. Gives you 25 copper back for your one electrum. Because I can't. He gives Kodiak a quiver of 20 arrows. 20 arrows. Okay, cool. I'm done with the store. I walk out. I don't know. What do you need? Did 
I don't think she was faking if you're letting them fall off of you and putting them back. That's why the two can have me stuck. Yes. We're <laughs> waiting for you, honey. Okay. Do you have any crossbows? I do have crossbows. And some bolts for said crossbows. I do have bolts for said crossbows. My bolts are 20 for five gold pieces. But you will not find better cross bolts in Dahl, Barovia. I take great pride in my... They're not enchanted, but they are of fine quality. I'll give you five. I'll give you five gold pieces for the bolt. How much for the actual bow itself? Anything under twenty. I have a very nice crossbow. Is it under twenty gold? I do want to try it. That one is not. But I do have one that was recently sold to me that I would be happy to give to you for 10 gold. It's a deal. 10 for, 10 for the gold, 5. 5 for the, the bolts that go with it. Here you go. All right. Thank you, Let me add. All right, so Annette's got her stuff, his stuff. What are y'all doing? I'm here to meet, bro. <laughs> I walk outside to hear where this music is coming from. Alright. I'm well my companion is in the I'm wandering. I will I'll join in with I'm gonna I'm gonna go into that cauldron shop. The apothe apothecary. Oh see if I may have any uh potions. Did you get your crossbow? Yes. It's an old so, you walk in, and you see a little old woman, and you look at her, she is, appears to be half Dusk Elf, and half Vistani. Dusk Elf? Yes. I don't think I've heard of a Dusk Elf. It's an elf that lives in her house. And she says, Welcome to my to my shop what can I do for you I'm looking for a health potion or potion healing do you have any my friends and I are prone to getting ourselves into I I have health potion I have love potions. Love potions. I have ingredients for potions. You said you want health potions. I have health potions. I don't know. Do you know how long it has been? Since I have sold anything. Mr. Duncan. <laughs> Nobody comes in here. Nah. <sighs> one potion, one gold piece. That's a good idea for me. Um, if that's okay, can I have nine? Only if you have nine gold pieces. Well, you're rich. How much for the one? And the one is the double. Yeah. Well, hypothetically, let's say we use this love potion and we fall on each other or. Um, let's use it on Spanish. Use it on the other. Well, the have fallen in love with you. Yeah, I'm saying maybe there's a demonic kind of vampire that want to kill a lot of people. Uh -huh. 
I don't think you could get him to drink the potion. <laughs> if, if who you speak of is the same person that I think of, then you would have to drink the potion yourself. So that when he takes a drink off of you, he's drinking the love potion, but then you're dead. So. Perfect plan to that. <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna be the one. So. <laughs> I love that thing, so. Or the barrier. Anyway, take your light off, put it in. You know, my dear lady. Yes. I used I knew a friend back where in my home city. It was very a very popular apothecary. But she was famous for another thing. See, she not only made potions, she also made perfume. Maybe you said you're not getting a whole lot of business. Maybe you can learn how to make well, the the problem is not that I don't have good stuff to sell. Their problem is that I am Vistani, and the Vistani aren't welcome very much in town. I and like and well, I like you too. Like Would you like a love potion? <laughs> Hello, baby. Well. I have no problem with you. You just give me nine gold pieces. I'm happy. <laughs> oh. No, we don't have to worry about dying. If you decide you need more health potions, I will gladly put somewhere up and have them ready next time you come to Velaki. <laughs> you come. You come see Anya. Come join you. Come join you where? Have you already drank a love potion? Now, now look here. You, you're all fine, young, strapping man. I love it. But I, I, I am a rather older woman, and I don't think I could handle all of y'all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could, I could definitely teach them some things. There's, there's a reason our desk girls were quite popular. We had lots of babies at one point in time. How old is Strong? I don't know. Are you asking her? Damn. He's well. No. Yes, he's older than me. I'm not pretty old. So. so. We're going again. Where are we going? Are y'all done flirting with, with my Anya? Thank you. Come again whenever you want. Yep. Any more questions? We know where to go. I I will I will take consideration into your perf, perf, perfume idea. <laughs> Next time y'all go in, she's gonna like reek a shit. It's perfume. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I looked it up. It said Ude Toilette. I just didn't you know. <laughs>
<laughs> Victoria's Secret. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are y'all doing? My my famous DM. Matt Mercer says, How are you gonna do this? Greg Dust says, What are y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> I got quivers, so I'm, I'm happy. I got a whole entire class. No one else gave quivers. There's a meeting that there's a hot ginger in there, so we do a ginger meeting. Ooh, no. Okay, I don't know. It's the bones. your way through the, the woods. Working in the direction that Zoldar told you to head. Alright, so we're going to get into the, uh, the rowboat. First of all, is this thing being able to hold all of us so we need to send right. someone back? Well, they hail back. We might find more than one. Watch <laughs> <laughs> that. Oh, yeah, if he goes in the water, he's like, okay, we don't have to walk over the car to buy a car. Like, it's all out. Like, it's all out. Like, it's all out. Are you coming with him? 
Yes, Dan's good. I'm just listening. Uh, what are you listening to? The <laughs> bunch <laughs> All right. Aww. So, as you make your way up the road from town, our fictional love me. Puppers. Puppers. I already rolled for it too. All right, 19. Anybody got 18? 17? 16? Day two got 16. 15. 14. 13, 12, 11, 11. Oh, you got to fight for 11? You can go first, bro. Right. Me, me and Ava got a 6 and a 6. Ava got a 6. Irina. Irina is sleeping. She's just sleeping. She's taking a nap. You know that. You want to take that down? I should not be sure. You're probably playing video games. All right. Maybe she's ready to have a load of guns. No, no, let's do this. Let's do this, guys. So what deck do I roll from my uh, wall? Uh, roll one. Come on. Figure out which one you're wanting to kill first. One, two, three, and four. Right. Right. <laughs> I am rolling against Wolf One. Wolf. I'm shooting my longbow against Wolf One. So first you want to roll, roll your twenty to see if you hit it or not. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Okay. Twelve. Plus one. Plus one. Plus one. So... What kind of are you using? Oh, plus seven. So... Yeah, you're hitting this thing. Nineteen. Give me just one sec, guy. <laughs> I'm trying to find a wolf fight, but. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, no shit. Alright, so. 
Kodiak, what'd you roll? 19. 19 is going to be a hit. Thank you for your damage. Six, baby. Six, six damage. Is it died? It's not died, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Halo is next. <laughs> Halo's up. Fifteen is a hit. Use your long sword. Hello. How do you want to do this? Cut off. So as the wolf lunges at you, its teeth drawn back in a snarl, a low growl emanating from its throat, and just as it acts as if it's going to leap at you, you slice cleanly, and its head goes flying off. Wolf one is dead. Give me wolf one. Thank you. All right, day two, you are up. I'm going to cast Ray of Sickness on Nat 20, baby. Nat 20. <laughs> well, he's running a spell. Seven Constitution, what do I have to get for the safe? That's what we So you got five damage on it though, and now it's poisoned. Cast six. Yeah, yeah. All right. And it is poisoned. <laughs> All right, Belcar, you are up. Let's go, Belcar. All right. So. <laughs> We are in the woods. Right. He's fixing to climb a damn tree. <laughs> He's I'm not going to climb a tree. I'm just going to walk around. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to use my movement to walk up a tree. <laughs> and now I've okay. got present on the side of all wolves. Uh, it says, must make a DC uh, 10 constitution saving throw or take one D for the place of damage. Okay. Oh. I'm going to go ahead and go after wolf number two. Okay. Zero point eight wolf. Fourteen. Fourteen is a hit. Okay. 
my long bow, so that one of the uh, four terror screens. You're going after Wolf 2? Yeah. Ten damage. With Elkar. How do you want to do this? Fire Oh, we gotta keep the head head safe. It's still the head's still there. Yeah. So as Belcar hangs vicariously off the side of the tree. And he takes aim. And the wolves are looking at him going, can't fucking do that. He can let the arrow fly and it embeds itself between the two eyes. The light goes out and the wolf is dead. I really can't make wolves death exciting. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, uh. Nothing with a two. A gnat! You're up! <laughs> what did I just miss? I was like, afterwards, I just want to click in my head. That's not why I picked him out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Annette. <laughs> if he is, Annette is his gay lover. Now roll. Okay, come on, reel it in. Two is not a hit. All right, so Ava is up. All right, Ava, go along with the bitches. If I don't win, where is the tower? You don't know? Nine. Nine plus? Nine plus what? I don't think she has a thing, so I'll just give her the same as mine. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Five. That's five. That's what this is. Okay. That's a hit. <laughs> Yeah, so use a 1d6 and add 2 to it. Okay. So you only use one of these, and then add 2 right here. Get four. So four points of bite damage. <laughs> On wolf number three. You did four damage, right? So, wolf number three is up. It is going to go after all the space. Is that right in front of them? Uh, no, not Ava. Who's that? Okay, he's going after Halo. Wolf three is. Yes. Meanwhile, this one is done. Meanwhile, this one is done. He's a tank. Yeah, he's a tank. Yeah, he's a tank. He's 
So it is not a hit. So wolf number four is also going to go after Halo. But first he's going to run up to the tree that uh, Melkar is sitting at and piss on it. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Oh. All right. The wolf gets 16. Would you say his AC is? 16. So it is a hit. He's going to go for a bite. Huh. What's a bite gonna do to Halo? Scratch his face? Alright, so he's gonna go for a bite. It might puncture a hydraulic. It might it might even throw the metal, but that's a bad thing. So he gets uh five piercing damage. Yeah, he's still tight. Which is good. Like, his base is good for ability, basically. Like, he's about to get a chance to spin that thing out of Yeah. Alright. So, Kodiak, you're up. Yes, ma'am. You got three or four ones. I, uh, I attacked three. Okay. I'm going to each one of them. Each one of them. Yeah, each one of them. 19. I think I hit. 19 is a hit. Yeah. Uh, three, uh, seven. Kodiak, how do you want to do this? I'll put the arrow through his asshole. <laughs> so, so, as the wolf, um, retreats <laughs> after pissing on the tree. <laughs> Don't let Zapper know. Kodiak pulls out a his arrow, lets it fly, and it goes right up the poop chute. <laughs> and as the wolf screams in pain and tries to shit the arrow out. He, he gets constipated. He collapses and dies. I call what three is head. <laughs> Alright, so you said Halo's AC is 16 and 45 hit points. Yeah, 1645. Thank you. What's his perceived perception? Uh passive? Yeah. Ten. Passive perception is ten. Wow. Okay. His perception is really, really, really low. He's an idiot. He's not very smart. What is going on? 